So uh, some highlights from from that thing for me. One was Deuce McBride making that oh, that shot, which yeah. was that, yeah. I think that was a Mountaineer magic right there, just for it to even happen, for even just a not even warm up shot. But you know that's why he's professional. That's why he's you know he's he's a uh, in the NBA. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Um, and I got to admit, I got overhyped as everybody else did for that Penn State game. I, I thought really we were going to come out swinging and, and have a chance to win, but we just were sloppy. I mean, yeah. that's all you can say. I mean, what do you, what did you see? Just all, yeah, on all, all phases, even the turnovers are not even uh, capitalizing or not even using the sh- our strength of our running game. I think that everything was just very lackluster. I feel like, um, you know, not to say that the stage is too big or Penn State was that much better, but I mean, that's what it looked like. It looked like they were more prepared and they weathered a storm of turnovers just as well. We couldn't do it. And, um, yeah, we didn't get off to the running game. Um, yeah, but I mean, the next tune up game we had was a good one to see that, Hey, it's there. Yeah. I mean, it was worrisome because I mean, there were several runs that, pa- or that Garrett Green did not do that were, he had the field open. I think he's, you know, when you have a quarterback that's a mobile quarterback and they're known for that, I think sometimes there is a, there's a, a reaction on their side to want to show that they can pass and throw the ball. And I think that's what we saw a little bit at Penn State. And then, got right back to form against Albany, which is Albany, not a bad team um, at all. You know, they're, they're good for, <laughs> they're good for in their division. But I think we saw a couple of things that were worrisome too in the Albany game. I'm personally concerned. I mean, I think everybody is about our secondary. Yeah. I mean, that number seven for Albany, he just was catching balls at will against us. It seemed like. Yeah. yeah and that's just one of the things, I mean, we've had that problem for years, it seems, or even just having, or just not the best of luck of as a playing as a, a whole unit. So hopefully we can fix that. I mean, it's still early. Um, if we got to get in shootouts, hopefully, you know, they don't have a, a big time receiver this year or in any other team. So, but you know, it can be fixed. Yeah. And I will say this, this, it wasn't like the guys were getting burnt. They were just like a beat too late. It seemed like on a lot of plays. And, and can you explain that? Is that really, is that a matter of just getting in sync or, you know, what is that when you see a team that looks just a beat behind? Oh, well, no, it's, it's definitely, um, I would say difficult in certain teams just because of, um, the scout team reps, the, um, second string quarterback, first string quarterback, you're facing somebody else. And, but, you know, these receivers nowadays are definitely getting better just in their craft of being able to track a ball to where, you know, it's not just hitting their hands and dropping it. So that's just one of those things to where it's pretty much always going to be a 50 50 ball and defense is just really, you know, looking at the receiver's eyes, ripping, ripping hands through is definitely trying to call something to make it even that much harder, but you know, it's, it's skill on both sides. And you brought something up. I mean, I, I feel like there are catches being made on, on, in, in college and in the NFL that, uh, it would never have been made before. It seems like, I mean, like, it seems like even if it gets on the tips of their fingers, they're pulling those balls in. I mean, it's definitely, a, I would say a plethora of receivers, even just of every year in the draft is not, Oh, you just got one big guy, but no, it's, it's definitely a lot of skill to where, like I said, it's the tracking ability of these receivers and just putting in that work. And I think, um, these kids now that you see that are, are, are playing well are putting, you know, roughly a 10,000 hours of training into catching balls. Wow. And I'll, I'll say the two things that I think are the most important to teams. I think we're looking good at it are our lines, our D line and our O line. I mean, they both look, look good. You know, we're good against the run. It seems like, what are you seeing in our running game that, that you like, or you're worried about? Um, I, I feel like the first game Penn State gave was you know, definitely the most worrisome, but you definitely have to, you know, like I said, we have a mobile quarterback. We have two great young run or two great young running backs to where you got to feed them ball, get them started. Cause um, you no, know, they're going, you're going to need them in the fourth quarter. So I think as long as the O line is doing well, you know, keep Gary green off the ground and always positive yards, even if it's two and three here in the first quarter, but it's always just to move the pile. Garrett looked good in the Albany game. Nico looked, you know, Nico's, I mean, we're lucky. We've got a backup quarterback that can walk in and just, run run the team just as well as as Garrett which is which is good with somebody who you know he's always putting his self in in danger running the ball I thought we looked you know it definitely was worrisome a little bit in the game when they were you know I mean they were they were one play away from being a score behind I mean it was it was closer than the score indicated for sure yeah 
Yeah, definitely. And that's how it usually turns out. And especially with, um, the college you know, playoff system is to where you got to make the school bird look more pretty. It don't matter how you win or what it looked like in the beginning. Cause at the end, it's not going to matter just by this, uh, the points and spread system.